I hope you like this. If you do, give it a thumbs up and leave any comments below. And remember to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all my hypnotic bedtime stories. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the story. So as you listen to me and begin to drift off to sleep, I don't know whether you'll find yourself drifting asleep faster with the sound of my voice, or whether it'll be with the words that I use, or perhaps with the spaces between my words. And as you drift comfortably asleep, so I'll tell a story in the background. A story about somebody sitting down to meditate. And every day they sit down, close their eyes and drift comfortably into a meditation. Wherever they are, they always find time to sit down, close their eyes and drift comfortably into a meditation. And one day they're up on a hillside, with their eyes closed and they're listening. They can hear distant sounds. They can hear birds. They can feel the breeze on their face. They can feel the ground beneath them. They can feel the way they're breathing in and breathing out. They can notice how thoughts pass by like sticks on a stream or clouds in the sky. And they find a sense of rhythm, a sense of comfort, a sense of harmony, as they explore a sense of inner wisdom. And as they continue to meditate and drift deeper inside their mind, They start to find themselves walking towards a bed. And they walk towards that bed and find themselves getting into the bed and lying down. And they find themselves feeling more comfortable. And the more comfortable they feel, the more they notice themselves drifting comfortably asleep. And as they drift comfortably asleep, they start to find themselves in a dream. They discover that they're in a vast cavern. And in this cavern is a giant dragon. And this giant dragon lets out a roar of fire in their direction. And they hide behind a small piece of rock, ducking down behind that rock. Watching as the fire passes all around them while they're shielded by the rock. They then run out from behind that cover, looking around, watching how that dragon's head is tracking them. They spy another rock. They jump through the air, flip over in the air and land behind that rock just as another outburst of fire comes in their direction. And they're protected from that fire as well. They then poke their head up as the dragon breathes in. 
they see that there's some rock nearer to the dragon. They jump over the rock. They run towards that rock as the dragon's head tracks them. They dive towards the rock, skid along the ground and slide up against the rock just as the dragon lets out another breath of fire. They duck down and protected behind the rock. And they can now hear the dragon's breathing, almost feel the heat of the dragon's body. As the dragon breathes in, they jump over that rock, run at the dragon, and jump up onto the dragon's neck. And they rest the palm of their hand on the dragon's neck. And they close their eyes and they think. And they channel their thoughts through their hand of peace, of calmness, of tranquility. And they communicate that through their hand, through their touch, through their breathing. Breathing calm, breathing serenity. Feeling the dragon drifting and breathing calmer and calmer, noticing the dragon's movements are becoming calmer and calmer as they communicate that through the touch on the dragon's neck, until after a few minutes the dragon lowers its neck, lowers its head to the ground, its breathing slows right down. And the dragon relaxes. And they then climb down off the dragon and head back through that cavern. Leaving the cavern, heading down a tunnel, out of the tunnel, to see a vast open meadow and off in the distance to see mountains and see forest. And they see a gathering of tents. And they walk over to the tents. And the people that are waiting at the tents are cheering and clapping and celebrating what you've just done with the dragon. And you go over to those tents to find out what's going on. And you find out that the dragons are normally friendly in this land. But something had cursed them and made them become aggressive. And so you had been called in to calm the dragons down, to use your touch, the way you communicate to calm the dragons down. And you've now calmed this dragon down. And now the task can be on to find out how to stop all the other dragons, how to calm the land again, how to undo the curse. And you walk with someone into a tent and they show you a map on a table. And they show you where you are. They show the forest and the mountains and the lake beneath the mountains among the forest. And they show a mark on the, la on the map where you have to get to. And 
And so you leave the tent and you start on your journey down into the land. And you walk down, heading down towards all the trees, heading down towards that lake. And as you walk towards that lake, so you can hear the sounds of birds, feel the breeze on your face. And going down near the forest and noticing the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. As you walk through the trees. Wondering what it is you're going to have to do to end this curse. And you walk through the trees. You walk all the way down to the lake. And at the lake you start off walking around the lake. And then reach a point where you see a small boat and so you take that boat and you row across the lake. Pushing that water with the oars on one side then the other then the other side, then the other, smelling that fresh water of the lake, rowing across the lake to the foot of the mountains. And at the foot of the mountains you begin to climb. And you climb and climb. And then halfway up, the sun is setting and you find a cave. So you set up a temporary camp in the cave. You light a fire and notice how the firelight dances on the cave walls, the shadows dance on the cave walls. You can hear the whistling air as it blows past the cave, as you relax in this cave, feeling warm and calm and comfortable, relaxing in this cave and slowly drifting off to sleep. And then in the morning, some sunlight shines in the cave and you leave that cave and continue your climb climbing higher and higher up in the mountains where the mountains become snowy and you continue climbing up through the snow hearing the cracking crunching of the snow beneath your feet climbing higher and comfortably up higher into the mountains. And as you get nearer to the top, so you notice there's some kind of a structure up here on the mountains. And you start climbing towards that structure. And you notice it looks like some kind of a temple. And you slowly and quietly walk into that temple. And as you do, you notice how the sounds of the wind die down, how it's much warmer in the temple than outside. And you start walking around this temple. And you find an ancient book. An ancient book that starts telling you about the curse and how to lift that curse.
and you have to go to the highest peak and look down over the land in a special way and you'll know what to do. And so you leave this temple, you continue climbing higher and higher up the mountain until you eventually reach the top and you gaze out over the land both sides of the mountain and you see that up here there's a circular pad on the ground, a circular space And so you sit down in the center of that circular space. And you gaze out over the land. Closing your eyes. And drifting deeper and deeper inside with each outbreath. And the deeper and deeper you go the more connected you feel to the mountain and then to the land. And in your mind's eye, you start seeing light blue lines spreading out from you, like threads spreading out from you, connecting with the mountain, connecting with the nearest animals to you connecting with animals further away and gradually connecting with all life in the land. And you start to see this connection happening with your eyes closed as if they're open. You start to see the way you're connecting with all life in this land with these blue threads. And then you notice that some red threads start to appear. And you see one of the red threads is up in the air and you follow it. And you notice it's a dragon. And then you follow one of the other red threads and can see another dragon flying elsewhere. And you realise that the thread, red threads must be taking you to dragons and connecting with the dragons. And all the blue threads are connecting with everything else. And that those red threads need to be blue. And so you start to see the way you're connected to all things. And you start to send loving kindness, peace, down those threads. You start to see those red threads turning blue, as if there's blue coming out of your body and down those threads, and you watch as the threads start to turn blue, and that blue expands further down the threads, the more relaxed you become, and the more focused you become, but not in a conscious forced focus. Just a relaxed, automatic focus, curiosity, absorption on the ongoing experience. And you focus on passing loving kindness, compassion, relaxation, comfort through those threads. And you see how that starts to pass towards the dragons. And eventually those threads turn blue. And you notice that the dragons that were flying are now flying in a calmer kind of way. And that from up here you're able to see and connect with all things. and spread out some of what is useful from you 
into all those things, including the dragons, and calming the dragons in the land, and undoing the curse in the land. And after all the threads have turned blue, so you notice that now there's a white, beautiful light spreading out from yourself, sparkling and twinkling down those threads, turning those threads a beautiful white light, sending peace and love and kindness to all beings in the land, undoing any curse and protecting everyone from any future curse. And you relax and meditate and pass that along. And then after all the threads have turned white, it feels right to allow the eyes to open. And so they open as you stand up on that space. And you start heading back down from the mountain. And the sun's setting, so you stop off again in the cave. You light the fire again. Drift off, have a comfortable sleep in that cave with the way the light dances on the walls. The way the shadows dance and the comfort in the cave. And then in the morning, you continue your journey down the mountain, all the way down to the lake. And then at the lake, you row across the lake to the shore the other side. And then start walking back through the woods, through the forest walking back to the meadows and finding your way back up to that camp with those tents. And as you arrive at the tents, so you get told that you've dealt with all the negativity in the land, you've broken the curse in the land, all the dragons are back to being friendly. And the land is back to normal. And so they take the tents down. They pack the tents away. And they all go off about their daily business without needing to worry about anything. Now the tents are packed away. And then you find yourself drifting back to meditating on that hill like you do every day. And then when the meditation's complete, you carry on with your day. And then at the end of the day, that calmness remains, that peace remains. And you go home, you get into bed and easily and effortlessly begin to drift off to sleep. And sometimes that's quick, other times it takes a few breaths to happen. Just drifting comfortably and relaxed, asleep.